Welcome to The Gym's Podcast. I'm your host, Joel Kleber, and this podcast is designed to share stories of our franchisees, franchisors, Jim himself, and other members of The Gym's family that we think you might find interesting. If you are researching our brand, we've got a previous back catalogue. There's so many great episodes that you can find online. And if you do like what you hear, please make sure you leave us a thumbs up on YouTube if you're watching, or online as well. We really do appreciate the support. Without further ado, here's today's episode. So Andrew, thank you for joining us today on the Jim's podcast. This is for our core voucher scheme. And we just want to just basically start off with a bit about yourself and where you're from and what you're doing prior to Jim's laundry services. Yeah. So, uh, we're up on the Gold Coast in Queensland. Uh, it's my wife and I, Sarah. So we both have started up the Jim's laundry services business up here. For Jim's, we have run our own business for 18 years. Sort of currently still have that as well. Uh, it was a photography and videography studio, but yeah, looking for something new at the beginning of this year and came across the Jim's Laundry and went for it. Yeah. So what was prompting the change? So you've been a business owner for a long time. So what, what prompted you to look for something else and why was it Jim's Laundry Services? So what prompted us to look for something else was we've been in the other industry, as I said, for 18 years. That kind of just runs itself now. And we just wanted a bit of a new challenge, something different, just a change. Being in our old job, that was very much of a lifestyle job, which was great while our kids were growing up. And now that they're grown up and don't need us as much, we uh, really want to just sink our teeth into something new and build something from like from scratch again. After looking at all different options and knowing how hard it is to actually start up a business from scratch as well, doing it once before, the we'd never looked at franchises before, but late one night, just up looking around and saw this and started looking into it. Took a little bit of time to tell Sarah that I was thinking about doing laundry because I don't know how she was going to take that, but. Um, yeah, just the business model and the type of the type of repeat work that we can get from this um, is what appealed to us, and what we feel like we can we can build it bigger than just sort of Sarah and myself. Yeah, it's very impressive. So you're in business by yourself for 18 years, which statistically is not a lot of people. So well done on that, because um, I know videography, photography can be as an independent can be very hard, you know, in terms of getting clients. So well done on you for doing that for so long. So how was the um? Let's say, well, let's say the comparison, you've obviously been running an independent business for 18 years compared to coming into gyms with our businesses. So how's been in terms of, was it been much easier for you or, you know, obviously you've had all the skill with it. So how have you found that gyms franchise program? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's definitely been great. Like we, we really enjoyed the, the process of it. Where it's been different is really just in the type of, the type of businesses. So the actual business model is way different to what we've run before. And also just the type of, the type of work obviously is very different as well. The support that we've received from our franchisor and the gyms group has been fantastic. They're there when, when you need them, but if you don't need them, they leave you alone, which is kind of good. And the training that we received down in Melbourne was fantastic. Just everybody sort of very supportive there. What appealed to us originally was just not having to go through that building up a reputation in a new industry. Again, we've already, we'd already done that. That can take a long time. And having the gym's name behind the brand is a, is a big thing in our mind. And it's definitely proving that case as we sort of get further on in it. We get a lot of clients that have either used another gym service and they just automatically trust you. They book you in without even thinking about it just because of the gym's brand and the gym's name. And I think that's the biggest plus for us is that we didn't have to build that from scratch. From your extensive business experience, well then how did you find the training? Because the three day generic course is generally like an introduction for people who have never run a business before, whereas you've run one for so many years independently and been successful. So was there anything you took away from it or how would you summarize that um, in regards to yourself? Yeah, I took away a few kilos. The, uh, the food down there is pretty bloody good. <laughs> we definitely ate a lot. Um, yeah, look, I, I think there was definitely certain parts of it, which we, we kind of knew a lot about just because we've run that business before. But I think that that's great to include that in the training for people that didn't know that side of running a business and how to sort of, you know, accounting and advertising and that sort of stuff. There was some really great information. And to be honest, after 18 years, you do get a little bit complacent about how you're doing things. So there was a lot of things that we, Sarah and I would look at each other and go, oh yeah, we used to do that. We should do that again, you know. Uh, oh yeah, we should be doing that as well. So it was kind of just a good reminder as well of what, needs to be done without having that reputation of the business already there. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and just the camaraderie, like we're still, we, we did the training sort of five months ago and we're still in contact with a lot of the guys that we did training with from, from different um, divisions. We've kept 
you know, kept in contact with them. We check in with them. You know, sometimes we're having a bad week. They're having a bad week. We're there to support each other. And I think that's probably the biggest thing that we personally took away from it is just those connections that we can make. Yeah, I love hearing that because that's very common that people, you know, come through training, they'll form a messenger group or something like that and they'll stay in touch. And that's people from like 10 years ago still yeah. stay in touch with each other from training. So I love hearing that sort of stuff. And in regards to the laundry services division, were you the first one on the Gold Coast or? Yeah, we are. We're still yeah. the first one. Uh, the yeah, first one. the one's up here. You know, that that's obviously been great for business, but it's also been challenging at times as well. It's um, keeping up with some of the demand and that. But yeah, we there's a few in Brisbane, but none on the Gold Coast. And I think that appealed to us as well with what we wanted to do or we still want to do with the business. That was a That was probably one of the, the selling points to us was that we would be the first ones on here on the Gold Coast. And I think that, you know, the climate up here is, is great. There's the mm. big move up here from all over Australia for lifestyle. So um, there's a lot of outsourcing of services on the Gold Coast. Not many people want to actually do anything for themselves. <laughs> um, you know, I was going to st- I was going to do this from down down yeah. the beach, but uh, unfortunately we've got Melbourne wet- weather today. It's raining. Yeah. So it hasn't rained for about two months up here. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, how's the work level? Well, how is the work level then? Obviously you said you're very busy, so I presume the leads have been good. And look at the system, you've got a perfect five-star rating. You haven't had one complaint, which is fantastic as well. So how's that? How are you being happy with the levels of work you've been receiving? Yeah. Yeah. I think we... Again, taking from what we've done previously in, in, in other businesses is we do a lot of work ourselves as well for our marketing and getting out there. We do a lot of business networking. That's, I guess, one thing that I find that a lot of the um, a lot of the guys that we did the training with and that, they're, they're starting to do a lot of that, but it's not necessarily something that is, that it is new to them or it's not new to us. So we've, we've sort of gone out there a lot in the community and just put our name out there as much as we can. The leads coming from from head office is great. I think being in a new area, it takes it always takes a little bit of time to get the name out there. Mm. Obviously, we don't have, uh, you know, when we come down to Melbourne, I think we I think we landed in Melbourne when we came down for the, the gala day, and within about three minutes, we saw in two gyms cars on the on the freeway, and we were just like, oh, it's they're, they're just everywhere in Melbourne, but on the Goldie, there's not as many. There's a lot, but there's mm. you know, you don't see there's them more. Anymore. Yeah. yeah. Now, with the um, when you said business networking, do you mean B and I groups, or what? What are you doing from business networking? Yes, yeah, similar. We don't do B and I, but we do um, just smaller networking groups. You know, uh, I think B and I can work amazing. We have done that in the past. Um, it's a huge commitment, obviously, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, we like the smaller ones where it's a little bit more less business like and a little bit more personal like, and just get to, getting to know other businesses. Um, how can how can people find out more about the ones in the area? What is it on Facebook or is it just Google searches, or how do you find out about your ones? Yeah, we found out uh, ours from Facebook. We found that one. We used to be in, in in another one, which we found out just through talking to another business, and they they mentioned it. We said, "Hey, can we come along?" It's really just getting out and talking to a lot of diff- as many people as you possibly can, and just always asking them what they do, which then leads on to what you do, yeah. and then you can sort of go from there. Uh, but Facebook's the, the best thing. Just you know, type in business networking in in your suburb or your area. Go to a couple. There's no expectations to stay in one, but um, it's always good to go. And if you click with a few people, it's it's also you know a lot of people in the service industry work for themselves as well. So we look at it like it's part of the, our team as well. Like it's mm-hmm. that Thursday morning we have breakfast with them. That's our time to have a chat to other people rather than just Sarah and myself all the time. So yeah, use it for more than just business. I think it's a great piece of advice. And especially when you're the only one in your division up there, it's not like you can have really a team meeting or anything like that regularly, which we do have sometimes a luxury of down here, obviously with the mowing guys and stuff like that. But I was going to say with, um, I've seen on your, you, you have the Instagram where you post a bit about, um, you do some rugby teams and you do some pretty big clients and stuff like that. So maybe you want to talk through some of the jobs and some of the customers you work for. Uh, yeah. So some of the big ones we've had. So um, the we have uh, in the NRL, I know it's not AFL, sorry guys, but the NRL, uh, we had the magic. And they track. tackle properly. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> we don't talk. I don't know. I don't know how the suns are going. I don't know if they go very well or not. But you got uh, something. Yeah, it's all right. Okay, we do actually do the AFL. We did them today actually. So we do the Oz kick up here. So whenever the suns play at home, um, the Oz kick the kids get out at halftime. I think and have a kick around. So after they have a home game, we do all the the Oz kick um, jerseys for the kids. When the Warriors from New Zealand were in town, um, they got in contact with us. So we had to do all of uh, their washing and, and their uh, jerseys and everything for them as well. That was that was, that was was a good job to get. Uh, really, really great bunch of guys as well. I met a lot of them. And then, yeah, and then some of our other commercial clients, we have um, universities, we have medical centers, physios, 
So it's a real range. We have you know elderly couples that are absolutely lovely. I I I I love our uh, our elderly couples because you go to pick up their laundry and you have to give yourself about an hour because they want to <laughs> light you in for a cup of tea, a cup of coffee. So yeah, it's nice. Uh, that's great to hear, Andrew. Now, do you want to talk about um, what does a typical day or typical week look like for you? Do you want to describe to someone in regards to how does the order of the day work? Is it you know you're doing pickups in the morning or drop offs or how does it all work? Yeah, so generally the way we do it, we have, as I said, Sarah and myself doing it. So I usually go out and do all the pickups in the morning um, and then meet Sarah down. So we work out of a laundromat. I know uh, a lot of laundry franchisees, can you can either work from home. I guess that's another point we can touch on in a minute is is the relationship we have with the laundromat owners. So I'd go and do all the pickups, go back down to the laundromat, sort of start unloading, work there until we get new jobs or if we've got to do new pickups. Uh, so I'm constantly in and out all day. Sarah tends to hang at the laundromat a lot more unless um unless there's some good surf around and then she does the pickups for me so I can go for a surf in the morning. Uh, there we go. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been flat for a long time. And then yeah, and then the afternoons doing the drop offs in the afternoons pretty much. So that's a typical day, but it's um it really depends if the phone rings. You know, when the phone bings and there's a new job on, we'll we're very you mentioned before like the five stars, like we're we're really aiming to get a lot of five stars so we can promote that later on. So we're very big on customer service so we get back to people i don't think there's been anyone that we haven't been back gotten back to within about five to ten minutes yeah if they need to pick up we'll go and do it we're definitely working a hell of a lot harder now for the last five months than we ever have before but that's that that was the plan yeah so with your customer service you have mentioned them calling back at asap is there anything else that you guys do in your business or how are you treating the customer to get such good reviews i think it's just what appealed to me the most about gyms was the fact that quality does matter and that in the gyms group, five stars is five stars and four stars and below is a complaint. People might not like that. I love it. I think that's the way it should be. Um, and I think that that's just aiming to give good customer service. We, we don't find it hard to give good customer service. I think that if you just put a smile on your face and you're happy to do the job, then the customer service comes from it. And then obviously the price and the quality of, the, of your work sort of comes into it after that. We're finding that by just uh, being nice people, um, making conversation without just selling to them as well. So mm -hmm. when somebody rings, if they've put something in their inquiry, we'll bring that up. If they mention, you know, someone spilled a coffee on their on their bed and they needed all their bedding in that, we'll, you know, say little things like, oh, what did you at least get to drink some of your coffee beforehand or something? <laughs> just try to make conversation with them. It kind of puts them at ease and... And then you, you get that relationship with them. And then when we drop off, we always mention to them that um, they'll receive a survey. Um, you are rating us. So if you've liked us, give us a five stars. If you don't like us, let us know personally and we'll, we'll fix it for you. That's great. Now, in regards to um, your services, even though it might sound like it's self-explanatory, do you want to run through all the services you can do? And maybe, maybe is there something different with it compared to maybe other providers that you know about? Yeah. So, I mean, the laundry service is uh, pick up and drop off. The normal service is a wash, dry, fold. Um, I always say wash, fold, dry, and that doesn't even make any sense, but I have trouble saying that. And then we do ironing as well. And then uh, we, we've branched out a little bit, so we offer like a curtain cleaning as well. So we can steam, uh, we can steam clean curtains. Um, and we're currently looking into a few other options as well in regards to like linen hire and that for the Airbnbs rather than just washing it. We actually hire it out on that service as well, which is something that I don't think many people are doing it or if anyone's doing it at the moment, but yeah, we're look, looking into that at the moment. Uh, I think one of the biggest differences that we've got from the other uh, providers up here on the Gold Coast is the 24 hour turnaround time. Generally we are same day. Um, we don't charge extra for the same day. Again, that's just trying to be offering an amazing service. Obviously that'll get harder and harder the busier that we get. So we sort of let them know it was going to be 24 hours, but then there's a text message saying, hey, it's already done. Happy to drop it back to you now. We, we've over, over delivered under promise sort of a thing. Mm. So yeah, I think, I mean, there's not, I don't think we're doing anything groundbreaking to what our other, anyone else up here is doing. We're just um, really focusing on that customer service aspect of it um, and getting referrals that way from people. Now, I think with this service though, because like for me, I was talking to Bill, who's the divisional down here, and it's still a service where people like, it's not something where we outsource it or think to outsource it, right? Whereas we outsource pretty much everything else, mowing, cleaning, whatever. Whereas with this one, for whatever reason, it still needs that almost sort of like that thing to say, it's okay to outsource this to save yourself time because it is a time consuming yeah. thing. And a lot of people 
don't like doing it and put it off and might it's whereas with this it's it's a really good price for what you get and as you said same day service is unbelievable for this i don't think people would expect that no. really like but to get to have a 24 hour turn time is really really impressive still to have it done professionally for you so are you surprised that is it something that customers i know still mention to you about surprise we do it or they just once they do it once they go geez i'm going to use this all the time and how, yeah, what's the think- sort of feedback I think we get different clients. Like we're we're definitely targeting more of the commercial client up here. So more of our clients are commercial than domestic. We do have some great domestic clients, and they range from mum and dads that are just extremely busy and have mm-hmm. small families and just don't have time for it. Um, generally, for us personally, generally the domestic client ones are the are the ones where mum and dad will own their own business as well, and that they really understand that if they spend time on the laundry or cleaning their house. That's less time. Yes, it's less time with their family, but it's also less time working on their business. So, you know, we have a, a great client up here who who runs her own business and she just said, she goes, well, I can spend two hours or three hours on my laundry or I can get you guys to do it, spend two or three hours on my business and I earn a hell of a lot more than what it costs me to get my laundry done. Mm. So I think that that's just, unless you've been a business owner, you wouldn't sort of think like that. And then we just get people that don't do it every week, but they just, they've got our number. We've done it once for them. We'll get a text message in sort of, you know, two or three weeks to, or three weeks time just going, Hey, can't stay on top of it. Can you just give me a hand this week? So it, it, they're not really going in for a regular um, service, but it's just when they need help basically. Um, and then we have obviously on the Gold Coast, the holiday makers, we get a lot of holiday makers up here as well. So they're on holidays. They don't want to take dirty laundry with them back home again. So they get it done before they leave. That's great. And you'd have to talk about prices, but I do know from a little bit about it, it's a lot more affordable than what I think people uh, presume for the level of service you're getting. Just for, as you said, it's just so much easier. And all of our franchisees who are business owners who do listen to this will clip this up, should be using you guys, especially Gold Coast. They're all around Australia. It's it's a no-brainer because they're all business owners as well, and I hope they do take you up on the opportunity. And I was going to say about the, um, you mentioned before about relationships with laundromats. Do you want to go into a little bit of detail about what you were talking about with that one? Yeah, so when we first started looking into it, we had the option of either running it from home and getting our own machines uh, or going down to the laundromats. We looked around at all the different laundromats here on the Gold Coast. Um, luckily, we have one like two minutes from the house, which is fantastic. They don't offer that service. So some of the laundromats already do offer a wash fold, mm-hmm. the other, then wash dry fold service. Um, these ones didn't. So we sort of went down there a couple of times, got to the point where we knew a few people, met the cleaner, found out who the owners were. Um, got in contact with the owners, had a chat with them, um, and it works fantastic. So now any inquiries that they get directly through the laundromat, they move them onto us. We're in the laundromat every day, so obviously we get a discount on the, the laundromat machines as well, so it works out a bit more cost-effective for us as well from the business side of things. But it's great for them as well because because having Sarah and I in there every day, we kind of everyone just thinks that we work, we own the laundromat or we work in the laundromat, so we're, yeah. we're suddenly helping people. But that's led to jobs as well. People have come in and said, oh, I'm glad you guys are here today. I'm, you know, I've got to run out. We had one just yesterday. She's like, oh, I just don't have time to do this. Can I just leave it with you guys? And we're like, yeah, sure. It's, it's cheaper if you do it yourself, but we can do it for you. So we pick up work just from people walking in as well. So we offer that. They can, instead of us picking it up and dropping it off, we'll just drop it off to them when we're finished. So it's it's been it's been great in the sense that we can meet We've met cleaners, we've met uh, um, property managers in the laundromat, all doing their own laundry that didn't know that this this service existed. And once we chat to them and they get to know us a little bit, we've started doing work for them as well. I think every single fella, every single bloke, not stereotyping, but should be using this service. If I had it when I was younger, I would have had a lot more cleaner clothes. And We yeah. do a lot. We do a lot for, <laughs> for just the guys that just live by themselves. <laughs> we made life a lot easier. But I was going to say the... Um, with, with your, are you happy with regards to what your business makes you as well? You don't have to say how much you make, but in regards to income and stuff, are you happy with the level where you're at? We're, we, we, we're happy with uh, where we're going. So yeah, definitely we have very high expectations. So as I said, this is something that we're, we've got very, very high goals in regards to this. And we're at a point where we're looking at the next stage of this business a lot quicker than we thought we would be, which is fantastic. There was definitely a challenge to start with. Um, it definitely wasn't as, um, it didn't kick into gear, mm. May, which we, we shouldn't have been surprised for. As I said, it was a new name, new new brand, new service on the Gold Coast in the gyms group. Um, and the first couple of months was a little bit hairy. 
but then it, once it once it got going, it really kicked into gear. And and I think going back to what we said before, I think that got a lot to do with what we've done on in yeah. in the extra is going out to those business networking groups, um, really just telling everybody about it. And I think that for the franchisees that can do that, for us anyway, it's that's been um, that's been the the biggest win for us is getting our name into the businesses because we don't only get referrals for other businesses, but we get referrals from other businesses to their friends because they like us and they want to work with us. No, you've definitely had a great attitude towards, because a lot of time people think when they put gyms on their work, just, you know, hopefully you get leads and stuff, but you still, especially with a new division, you still do need to put that groundwork in as you've done. You've paid, paid your dues in regards to doing that stuff, which is fantastic to hear that's paying off for you. And now allowing you to go to the next stage. So what's the next stage in your business plan? Um, you can say as much or as little as you want about it, but what, what are you hoping to do with the business now that you see the potential and that you've got yourself settled in? Yeah, we're in, um, we're, we're kind of at a bit of a crossroads at the moment. So we are sort of looking at two different options. One is, is actually a laundromat, um, and looking at our own laundromat, um, or two is opening up just a commercial place for more of the commercial side of things, but we're just trying to balance it with still working out of the laundromat that we're in at the moment because we obviously um, love the owners that we work with there and we want to keep that service as part of that laundromat because I think it actually helps they get a lot of business in in through through us as well. So yes, and, and as I said, as I already mentioned before, the Linden Hire as well is looking at sort of how we can incorporate that side of a business into a, a wash dry fold service as well. Yeah, I think the great thing, Andrew, is because you have such entrepreneurial background with what you've been successful with, you with gyms, a lot, a lot of people don't realize, they think like it's very restricted in regards to what you can do, right? But most people don't know that you could, if you wanted to buy laundromat and brand it as gyms laundry, you can do so. You're not going to pay any extra fees or anything. We actually encourage you to do it, right? And you could do all these different things like those services, your stuff you're providing. There's no restrictions from what we do as a franchise chain, whereas most franchises, from what we know anyway, are really restrictive on what they allow franchisees to do like if you're a mcdonald's franchise you're not putting your own burger on the menu because you've got you know it's it's whereas with this you're allowed to do what you want and the turnover is yours because it's it's not a flat it's a flat fee model it's not a percentage of revenue model which encourages you someone like yourself with high quality business background to go and do these ventures which we would love you to see to do actually be fantastic yeah and that that's what appealed to us like you know as i said we've never owned a franchise before this so obviously I guess like anybody should be, we're a bit nervous going into it and, and sort of going, okay, are we getting, are we doing the right thing? Franchises, you never know, you know, obviously there's some franchises in, in, in Australia that get a bad rap in that. Um, but the more we looked into it and the more we spoke, we spoke to a lot of people, uh, current gyms, franchisees, current franchisors, ex franchisors, ex franchisees. We really tried to just get a hold of anyone that we could to, to buy them a beer and ask them about their, their time with gyms. Um, before we decided to go ahead with it. And yeah, and that was that was a big deciding factor from it is that you are part of the franchise, you are part of the family, you've got that name on your chest, but you are your own business. Um, obviously there's res- you know there, there's compromises and there's restrictions and, and you know there's some things you got to follow, which is totally fine. but you do have a little bit more freedom than other franchises. and you know if you've got an idea, people are open to hearing it, which is the the best thing about it, I think. Well, I think, yeah, exactly right. And I think that's the case, whereas Jim is, because it's not a public company, Jim's a private company, he can do what he wants, really. But um, in regards to that, it's a good thing because if we didn't have that ability to allow people to be entrepreneurial, we wouldn't have some big divisions or we wouldn't have some franchisees who have 10 staff and this and that, it would discourage yeah. people. So it's a great vehicle with people who've got all these great skills like yourself to be able to really, like, who knows, you could you could do a chain if you wanted to. Like, it's not a, it's not a problem from head office, yeah. which I think a lot of people have that big, misconception with franchising because we always see the horror stories in the news about a, a retail based one and all that sort of stuff which is a bit unfortunate right. yeah it's hard but what questions were you asking the, the people when you're doing your research was it just about you know, how do they treat you or what was the sort of things you were doing your research on um yeah really just about the biggest question i, I like to ask is just what were the biggest challenges that they had i kind of I, i'm a sort of person that maybe just looks at things and goes all right well if there's a challenge we can either you know there's either an answer to it or there's there's usually usually an answer to it, but it's whether the answer is viable or not. Um, so it's really just I was just really just asking them about their opinion if they liked it, um, if they were happy. You know, we spoke to some ex ex uh, franchisee uh, owners of ex franchisors that left for different numerous reasons, but they all had the underlying story that while they were there, they were still extremely happy. 
um and that they you know that yeah as long as as long as you go into it knowing that that you have to put the work into it i think that's probably again we've already touched on that i know but but that was a big thing that we took out of chatting to everybody is that you know being part of the franchise is only half half the half the part half the deal half the part on your end yeah exactly, exactly. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you did that because a lot of people, we always say do your research and a lot of people don't call the ex-franchisees some time when they're available to do that. So I'm glad to hear that you did that and that helped you with your decision because that's what we want is people who research like yourself to that extent. And it's even better for us because you're coming from a, such an experienced business owner with yourself. It's a credit to what you know well, what we hopefully do and, and what we put in front of you. And it's almost like, a, I don't know how you describe it, but it's almost like for someone like yourself, it's such an accelerant. Like you know all that hard stuff about setting up a website and doing your marketing and all that sort of stuff. And whereas with this, you can just come into it and it's the base is there for you to do it. As you, you just got to do all those extra things, which has been your business business networking and and you obviously yeah. haven't sat on your hands at all, which is fantastic to hear. And look where you are in a short amount of time. Yeah, I think I think as you said then, like you know, obviously setting things up these days are a hell of a lot easier than what they were eighteen years ago. Mm. But um, but yeah, it's just not having to worry about that and just being able to hit the ground running. I think that's that's the that was the, the the key thing for us is um you can definitely no i should say this but you could you could definitely do it yourself but it will take you longer we, we feel it will take you longer and as i said what i touched on before is that you you need to build if you if you're doing it yourself you've got to build that trust um and that reputation where whilst we are still building that and we're building that with our current clients it's easier to get those those first lot of regulars and those first lot of clients under the gym's name because they've already got a certain level of trust and then you've just got yeah. to build yeah you don't it's yeah you don't have to establish really credibility or you know it's almost got because it's the gym's brand you've got that implied you know social proof just in the brand people assume it's going to be head office in the background you know this person's going to be vetted all that sort of stuff whereas an independent brand which you can, anyone can do but by all means but um and that's, a just, talk, and that's a talking point like like I was, I literally filled up the car today and the guy behind the counter is like, oh man, is there anything the gym doesn't do? And I'm like, <laughs> not much. Um, but the thing is like, you know, if you wear your uniform out and about, like people want to talk about it because it is a known brand in Australia or, you know, it is, it's, um, you know, there's, there's a, you can tell I love, you can tell I love this by the level of memes. You tend to with Australian culture. There's a lot of memes, like you got Bunnings memes, you have Dan Murphy's memes and there's Jim's memes, all right? And yeah. there's people are building businesses selling funny stickers and stuff, which is which is good for us because it's something yeah. that's well loved. And well, I don't know if you remember when I was down at training, we were talking to you guys, and we were, we were talking about how when we were in Bali, and there was like, uh, oh yeah, yeah. it was t-shirts. And I remember you saying all over Bali, and I'm just like, you know, yeah. that's uh, it, it, as I said, it's a talking point which makes it easier to talk about your business and get your business out there. You don't have to, if I just said to them, oh, it's Andrew's laundry, they'd be like, oh, that's pretty boring. Mm. But uh, it's laundry isn't necessarily the most exciting topic to talk about but the gym's group and the gym's brand is and that's what we talk about yeah and i think exactly right and i think having important now you know how it is with a brand like establishing a brand for so long but i think having um you know all five thousand small businesses that are mostly family run as well and just that networking and the talking like you do is is absolutely fantastic and you know you've got a great greenfield in gold coast being the first one there with what you want to do i'm sure it's going to be um real easy for you but all that aside, with your lifestyle, you mentioned surfing before. So, what else do you like to get up to in your free time? And how's the business sort of factor in with, let's say, your outside interests in regards to this? Yeah, this business is destroying it, Joel. Um, I mean, for a surf for ages. Yeah, no, as I said, like we're, we're working extremely hard at the moment. So, we are actually sort of not having much of a lifestyle, to be honest. But when we do, yeah, like, I mean, look, the Gold Coast is we moved up from Sydney 10 years ago, um, or maybe 11 years ago now. All again, same as everyone moves up here for. It's the lifestyle. It's the it's the relaxed, um, the relaxed feel to the place. Um, even though it was raining today, we were still in shorts and t-shirt, which was nice. And um, yeah, we we my kids are a bit older. They all surf with me now. We mountain bike and we try to try to stay active as much as we can. But um, yeah, I, I, no, we don't really do that much to be honest. We 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 lived a very hectic life in Sydney, and we moved up here to get away from that. And we, what's it? What's the best bit of advice for than someone wanting to make a sea change? There's a lot of people who are exiting Victoria and going up to the Gold Coast. I'm sure there'd be a lot of people making that. So what's the sort of, maybe what's some um, misconceptions or maybe some things people should know if they do want to make the, the change like you did? Make sure you're ready to meet new people. I think that's probably the biggest thing. And, and that's actually one thing that we loved about the Gold So we moved up here. We literally knew nobody. We had no friends up here, no family up here. We just, we were, as I said, we were in Sydney. We were going to move to Newcastle. I absolutely love Newcastle. 
So we'd already made the transition from our business moving from Sydney to, to, to Newcastle. We come up here for a holiday. And by the time we drove back again, we decided, no, this is where we want to be, not Newcastle. Sorry, Newcastle. <laughs> um, so we changed all that direction and changed the business up to here. Um, and the greatest thing about Gold Coast is that not everybody, but the majority of people have come from somewhere. So when we first moved here, people were just so overwhelmingly friendly to help us and tell us where to eat, where to go, what park was the best for the kids. You know, just so much of advice because they all went through when they moved here. I think, um, you know, unless you're going somewhere where you have family, you have friends or you have a network, you really got to get out there and, and make that connection with people. And obviously that helps with your business as well. It helps with our, with our other business. It helps with this business is knowing how to do that. But yeah, I, I don't know. Like you just got to be ready at the right time of your life. Like we moved, we moved the year that my oldest started high school and we kind of just went, look, if we don't go now, we won't, we won't leave Sydney for another 12 years. So we just, just decided to do it. Yeah. So when you first moved up, was it just, as you said, obviously you got out there and met people via business groups when you were trying to establish your business up there or was it, how did you, what, was there any sort of new, new locals, residents groups or anything like that? Or how did you do it? Uh, when we first moved up, the kids were still at school, so that was easy. So we just met met other parents from school. Um, obviously, the kids make friends, so you make friends with the parents, and they're all still our, our friends up here now. Um, it's all it's pretty much all through our kids. It would be a lot harder, I, I, I think, if your kids weren't at school or weren't in sporting clubs and things like that. But yeah, again, with the business side of things, yeah, coming up here. So when we when we moved up here, uh, again, being having a photography industry, is we were surprised that there was no connection between other photographers up here on the Gold Coast, where in Sydney, we used to go to a, a breakfast group every week um, with other photographers, and other videographers, just to network. And we bounced, we, you know, shared work and things like that. So one of the things that Sarah and I did was we started up a Gold Coast breakfast group up here in, in wow. the Um We ended up getting, by the end of it, oh, we, we still sort of chat to a lot of them, obviously, but we don't catch up as much anymore. But there was about sort of 40 or 50 photographers all sort of having breakfast and catching up and sharing work amongst each other. And, um, yeah, before that, though, it was just very, uh, wasn't sort of uh, connected. We're kind of half in the process of doing that with the gyms as well. I, I feel like we're, we're catching up with a couple of other franchisees and we're slowly building that little group. Um, and just, yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll end up having like a monthly, um, we call it the Jimbo catch up, but having a having a, a monthly Jimbo catch up with all the different gyms up here and and uh, just, yeah, as I said, just having people to, to bounce off and network off and chat to and get out of your house for a little bit. And what's a big misconception you think from people who don't live on the Gold Coast about the Gold Coast? Maybe what are some things that you found out when you, once you live there, you sort of maybe might have changed your opinion on a few things. You know what? Everyone thinks of Gold Coast as like Surface Paradise and Cavill Avenue. Um, <laughs> you know, I think we've been there. We've been here for 11 years now. I think we've been there maybe like five or six times. What I love about the Gold Coast the most is that it, it is really still a small country town. Actually, since, since we started the, the gym's this this business i've never driven so much around the gold coast because our entire life was a we lived near burley um which is our favorite place on the gold coast Burley heads yeah yeah, burley yeah. Head. um we surf there nice place it's amazing it's incredible it, it is one of the best no actually it's not that great don't come in no it is <laughs> everyone comes school holidays gets a bit hectic but that's all right it, it, it's really small towns like everyone stays everyone stays within their suburbs um not not within this that doesn't sound too good Everyone has their own little networks in their suburbs, but there's a lot of local little places. There's little cafes, um, you know, little little eateries, little bars, a lot of breweries, things like that. You don't need to sort of go into a city where if you, you know, if when we were in Sydney, when we were, when we were living in Sydney, we were in the suburbs. And if we wanted to go for a day out, we'd like, okay, it's, we used to call it, it'd be like a minimum of a hundred dollars. You have to pay for tolls and mm -hmm. parking and getting into the city and have a day out. Where here the day out is lit walking two and a half minutes down the road to the beach. Um, you go for a swim, you go for a surf, you just hang on the beach. Everything's there's a lot of free things up here. The, the, the council put a lot of free activities on, which is something that we weren't used to uh, in Sydney. Everything get used to pay for everything in Sydney. So I think yeah, I mean, but in saying that, there's also is that element of Gold Coast which everybody knows and and that whole uh, service paradisey type of feel. But um, it's it, Kind of, I don't know, I'm not too sure about Melbourne, but in Sydney, you've kind of got like the King's Cross area, but you go there when you're young and you have a good night yeah. or whatever, but you don't live there. And that's very similar to Service Paradise and Gold Coast. You don't live in Cavill Avenue or you don't live in Service Paradise. It's fun to go to, but yeah, you very rarely do. Uh, Burley Heads is great. I've got a mate who got married up there in the Gold Coast and um, 
we spent a bit of time around there. And yeah, the bowls club there's awesome. I'm an old person, that, that bowls club with the background in there. And yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic place. little spot, but the property prices have just gone crazy. I remember, I think before COVID, he was saying like their apartment, they got a two bedroom apartment for like, you know, pretty decent price. Now it's just pretty much last four years, this has gone berserk. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I think, I think it's like that everywhere, isn't it? But, um, it is, I think it's on track to be like the most expensive city. They were saying in, eventually, I can't remember what, what you are, what year it was even more so than. Man, we well, yeah, might just like working a bit harder than, uh, <laughs> yeah, like it, it is expensive. It, it's one of those things where you, you live in a holiday destination. I mean, people pay and we, 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 we don't take this for granted. We remind ourselves all the time is that people pay a lot of money to spend a week where we live every day of our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, yeah, you know, sometimes we have to force ourselves to actually slow down and stop working for a bit to go and enjoy it. Like a Sunday afternoon on Burley Hill, we live three and a half, five minutes away from Burley Hill. And, you know, some months we'll be like, oh, we haven't been down to Burley Hill for like a month just for sitting on the hill and have a drink. So we're like, okay, we've got to do that. That's what, that's what we should be doing. That's a beautiful part of the world. And what I'll do, Andrew, we'll leave it there. I'll get, we'll get you the core voucher as well. I don't have the actual physical voucher. I normally present it, but basically it's a, um, uh, it's uh, two free nights at any or core hotel. There'll be plenty of like those up in, in the Gold Coast. You know, so basically, I think it's worth like $600 or something, the silver membership, 50% of dining and drinks and stuff like that. So we'll get that to you after as well. So thanks for being a star franchisee. It's, it's really easy to, from talking to you to see, to hear why and to see why you're doing so well. And I'm looking forward to what you can do with the business up there. And it's awesome to have someone like yourself and your, and your wife driving the gym's culture and driving that up there and establishing in the Gold Coast with that Jimbo meeting and stuff you're doing. I reckon that's really fantastic to hear. And Jim yeah. will love hearing about those sort of things. So that's really great. Thanks for letting us know as well about that. Yeah, it's got a lot of, a lot, a lot of legs to get onto that. Yeah, we're only just starting it, but yeah. That's it's, a great, it's a great idea, but it's, it's just- I think it'll be good. Yeah, I know it's just great attitude yourself and your wife have got in regards to what you're doing. And Bill's very lucky to have you guys up there driving it for the Gold Coast and hopefully we can get some more franchisees up there to help with the workload. Perfect. Well, thanks for having us, mate. No worries. Appreciate it. Thanks, Andrew. Great, great to chat to you. No worries. See you, mate. Bye. Thank you for listening to the episode of the Gyms Podcast. If you want to learn more about the Gyms Group, head to gyms.net or call us on 131 546 Australia or 0800 454 654 New Zealand. And if you did like the episode as well, please make sure you leave a review or a comment or a thumbs up or a comment on the video as well. We appreciate your support. And until next episode, we hope you have a great week.